Hello, we are group three. Our members' names are Ling Yu, Ricky, Donna, and Danielle, and our chosen site is Cooks River. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet today, which are the Gadigal and Wangal people of Eora Nation. The history of urban form and development along Cooks River features themes of extraction and exists within the Sydney context as a settler colonial state. The creation story of Cooks River begins 20,000 years ago. At this point, Aboriginal people had already lived in the Sydney region for thousands of years. The river reaches its modern day course around a thousand years ago. The Wangal, Katagal, and Gamagal people lived along Cooks River at this point. As traditional custodians of the river and the surrounding lands, they employed sustainable land management practices to preserve the natural resources they depended on. European colonization, beginning at the end of the 18th century, brought about drastic changes to the river. As shown in both parish maps, the river served as a natural edge to lot boundaries. Early land grants along the river, although sizable, remained largely uncleared and unused by Europeans. That was until the industrialization of the mid to late 19th century. Large swaths of flood-prone land close to the river was bought out to form industrial hubs. These industries included lime kilns, tanneries, and sugar works, which extracted resources from the river, causing massive deforestation and polluting the water with waste. Further westward settlement followed industry and extracted sandstone from the river outcrops to support infrastructure. This resulted in large segments of the river changing course. From the early to mid 20th century, Cooks River continued to serve as a corridor for westward expansion of Sydney. New development during the Federation period and early garden suburb movement through the post-war housing boom largely followed a detached suburban form mixed with disjointed green space. The construction of Prince's Highway and Canterbury Road facilitated continued development in the Canterbury to Hurlston Park area, leading to increased canalization and rerouting of the river. New open spaces to support recreation along the river were constructed without consideration to the natural wetlands of the Cooks River edge. As demolition, reconstruction, and gentrification along Cooks Rivers peaked in the 1970s, a distinct character emerged in the urban form along bordering suburbs. Residential building forms around the Canterbury and Hurlston Park area consisted largely of inner West Victorian, Federation, and interwar bungalow architecture. These building typologies, dispersed among adaptive reuse, de redeveloped industrial buildings, and new high-density housing projects from the late 1990s are the predominant typologies observed in the site today. Along with other activism movements at the time, a grassroots environmental movement began in the 70s to 80s in Sydney, and restoration and rehabilitation efforts were turned toward Cooks River. This laid the groundwork for contemporary urban planning values like ecological health and environmental sustainability. Urban consolidation policy of the 90s transformed remnant industrial areas around Canterbury and Walleye Creek into high-density mixed-use precincts. Efforts to promote urban greening and restoring natural vegetation along the Cooks River Corridor faces the challenges of conflicting with housing density needs. In the late 1800s, proposals were made to link Cooks River with Sydney Harbour via canal system to facilitate waterborne commerce and reduce industrial pollution. However, these plans never materialised due to financial and political obstacles. In the 1930s, the riverbanks were concreted to manage sewage and urban development, significantly altering the river's natural ecosystem and reducing biodiversity. By the 1950s and 60s, Flood management efforts reshaped the river with levees, further mitigating its natural state. Land reclamation for industrial development in the early 20th century further polluted the river and destroyed wetlands. By the mid-20th century, stormwater management systems were introduced, initially designed to manage flooding, but led to increased pollution as urban runoff carried oils and chemicals into the river. The Cooks River Alliance is a collaborative effort focused on the health and management of the Cooks River and its catchment area. It brings together four councils, Bayside, Strathfield, Inner West and Canterbury Bankstown, to work with local communities towards a healthier river. This alliance respects the river's cultural significance and acknowledges the land's traditional owners. 
the Gulayari Alliance Aboriginal Partnership ensures Aboriginal voices are included in the river's management. Community engagement is critical, with locals encouraged to report issues and participate in on-site activities. Restoration projects and catchment-wide litter prevention strategies further support these efforts, helping empower the community and restore the river's ecosystem. The Cooks River Parklands Master Plan, initiated by Marrickville Council in 2014, guides the preservation and development of 2.5 kilometres of foreshore parklands. Shaped by community feedback, the plan balances ecological preservation with community recreation. The focus includes rehabilitating wetlands and native habitats to enhance biodiversity and water quality, creating open spaces for cultural and recreational activities, and improving accessibility. Ecological restoration involves planting native vegetation, reducing pollution, and promoting sustainable water management. Additionally, cultural and historical preservation honours the river's Indigenous significance. Key areas covered include H.J. Mahoney Reserve, Still Park, and Richardson Lookout. The Cooks River Parklands Master Plan is a 10-year improvement guide that began in 2014 by accessing existing conditions. Community engagement followed gathering input on park use and future improvements. By 2016, the plan was publicly exhibited, refined with community feedback, and officially adopted by the council. The plan aims to progressively upgrade the park by 2026, fulfilling a shared vision for the community and the council. The Greenway Project is a 5.8 kilometre environmental corridor that links the Cooks River at Earlwood to the Parramatta River at Iron Cove. As a critical part of Sydney's green grid, this project promotes non-motorised transport, environmental restoration and cultural connectivity. The vision is to create an interconnected space that respects the ecosystems and the historical significance of the Indigenous community. Key features include upgraded walking and cycling paths, bushland restoration, public art, and links to parks and heritage sites. The project also integrates public transport to encourage sustainable travel, with ongoing development aimed at enhancing accessibility and preserving the natural environment. The Cooks River catchment covers about 100 square kilometers in southern Sydney. Major tributaries include Walla Creek in the midsection and Cup and Saucer Creek in Canterbury. The terrain is higher in Bankstown, but lower areas like Tempe and Woolai Creek are more prone to flooding. The river flows into Bontanin Bay, which connects to the Pacific Ocean. It supplies fresh water to Bontanin Bay, but also carries urban pollution. The Cooks River is indirectly connected to other rivers like Parramatta River through the drain system. The topography and the contour influence the river flow with lower areas slowing the flow and the increasing the sedimentation. Areas like Canterbury and Wallai Creek experience more flood risk because they got lower in terrain. Channelization in areas such as Cup and Saucer Creek alter natural flow to manage the flooding. Railways and roads will have some interaction with Cooks River. The T4 railway line runs parallel to the river at the Tempe and Wallai Creek. Railway bridges slow down the water flow and railway fragment, riverbank the ecosystems and limited aquatic space migration. The roads like Canterbury Road and parallel to the river affecting its natural ecosystem. Bridge along Princess Highway alter the river flow, causing the sedimentation and the weakening of the flooding control. Over time, urban and industrial growth have altered the Cooks River landfall. Before 1788, the river was naturally meandering and surrounded by wetlands and wide flood plains. By 1788 to 1900, initial land clearing for agriculture began altering the landscape. By the 20th century, section of the river for urban development and the concrete many section of river to reduce flood and make infrastructure construction easier. The river nature curve was replaced by higher, more uniform riverbanks. Recent restoration efforts have focused on softened riverbanks and recovering wetland to restore nature contours to some river sections. 
200 million years ago, the sandstone and the shale bed rock of the Cooks River began forming. Over millions of years, river erosion curved valley, and by 1 million years ago, increased sedimentation shaped the riverbed. In the 18th to 19th centuries, human intervention altered the course and the, the 20th century saw industrial pollution and the erosion. Today, in the 21st century, efforts are underway to st stabilize the riverbanks and restore the ecological balance. In the West, the Hawkesbury sandstone domains Kingsgrove and the Bexley, shallower bed rock and the higher relief, while in the East, Arcliff and the St. Peter's are domained by deep and shale, which is eroded and lowering elevation, the lower ridges and the nearby Botany Bay. Rivers depose alluvial and arrestorized sediments that form wetlands and mangroves. However, human activity has affected by depositional pattern around the Sydney airport by filling it in. The soils around Cooks River has changed over time. Before 1788, the area has land soils like alluvial soils, clay soils, and the salt mesh soils from 1788 to 1900. They began to change the land, introducing new fuel soils. By 1900 to 1950, during the industrialization, fuel soils increased and the pollution started to affect the natural soils. In the 1950 to 1990 period, pollution reached its peak, which heavily polluted the fuel and the clay soils. From 2000 to now, efforts to restore the area has improved some soils, but fuel soils and the pollution are still present in the urban areas. The Cooks River has been closely connected to a large waterway like Botany Bay since 1950s, and its tributaries play a key role in water flow and the quality. Major tributaries like Walleye Creek and the Budwell Creek have helped supply the river, while smaller ones like Cobb and the Osser Creek and Cox Creek also contribute. So the satellite image from 1955 to to now shows urban growth around the river. The connection these waterways haven't changed much. The river still flows to the Patani Bay, connecting to the Pacific Ocean, where industry runoff continues to affect its water quality. The Cooks River has gone through big change in its vegetation due to urban growth and pollution. In the past, the river banks were rich with native plants like mangrove, salt marshes, and the shrubs. However, as cities and the industries expand, much of the vegetation was lost. Now, with efforts to restore the river, we are seeing some of these native plants return. Today, area around the river has mangrove, salty marshes and native shrubs once again. There are also different types of forests near the river, such as clay plant scrub, iron bark forest, and the sandstone vegetation showing how varied the plant life can be along the Cooks River. The development of Cooks River area has changed a lot over time. Before 1788, there were no roads or urban development near the river. From 1788 to 1900, as Sydney grew, roads and the bridge were built around the River, starting the process of urbanization between 1900 and 1915. Industrialization expanded and the high quality urban development took place, creating more space for factories and the transportation. During the 1950 to 1990, the river suffered from heavy urbanization with road, railways, and the resident areas spreading around it. Since 1990 to today, the area has become highly urbanized with a well-structured transport network, including highway and railroads, connecting different parts of the city to the river and the surroundings. Cooks River near Dulwich Hill and Canterbury is undergoing significant rehabilitation to improve its ecological health and provide a better environment for the community. Civil infrastructure projects focus on flood management, water quality and public access. Upgrades to stormwater system help prevent pollution during heavy rain, while new walking and cycling paths promote recreational use. Riverbanks have been stabilised with native vegetation, supporting biodiversity and water quality. Community engagement is key, with residents actively participating in maintaining the natural environment alongside the river. The Cooks River Corridor includes a variety of building types that have been adapted over time to blend with the area's rehabilitation efforts. Historical structures like the Canterbury Sugar Works, dating back to the 1840s, 
have become integral parts of the area's architectural heritage. These older buildings coexist with newer residential developments that have been designed with sustainability in mind, ensuring that modern infrastructure respects the natural environment. As the riverbanks are stabilised and public access improves, these buildings, old and new, contribute to the ongoing regeneration of the Cooks River area, reflecting a balance between history, residential needs and environmental responsibility. The Cooks River Corridor is surrounded by extensive public green spaces offering vital hubs for outdoor recreation. Public walking and cycling paths improve riverfront accessibility, connecting residents with natural environments while promoting well-being. Ecological restoration areas along the river focus on planting native species and preserving wildlife habitats. While these areas are typically accessible to the public, they are carefully managed to ensure protection. Additionally, some private land use along the river, such as residential properties and the Marrickville Golf Club, restricts broader public access in certain sections. During the site visit, clear boundaries between public and private spaces were evident, marked by signage and fencing that separated parks and pathways from private residences and golf courses. Both public and private stakeholders share the responsibility for maintaining the river's health with a focus on managing runoff and pollution. Transition zones where public paths cross over private land help maintain connectivity along the river corridor. However, restricted access, particularly from private developments like the Marrickville Golf Club, limits broader public use, fragmenting the experience of what could be more cohesive open space network. The changes of the vegetation can be separated into four periods. Before the colonization, there are a lot of native vegetation such as paper bark trees and so much. During the colonization, the urbanization cleaned the native vegetation for housing, roads, and industry. There are also some invasive spaces get into the Cooks River area. And after 1950, people started to control the invasive spaces and bring more native vegetations. Currently, the vegetation conditions can be combined both of the native vegetations and invasive spaces. And for the people and animals, before the colonization, there are a lot of wildlife in Cooks River area. And the calico and Vango people, they relied on the river's biodiversity to survive. During the colonization, wildlife declined due to the habitat destruction and the river pollution. And there are a lot of invasive species such as rats and foxes destroy the ecosystem. And from mid 20th century to present, people started to conservation restore habitats and plan to have more parks and parks increase engagement from the community. Currently, the government took a lot of action to improve the biodiversity, sustainability, and restore the ecosystem. Let's move to the public infrastructure and furniture. There is no formal infrastructure before the European settlement. The indigenous people use natural features like trees and rocks and landmarks used for navigation. And during the colonization, early roads like Princess Highway built for industrial access. People mainly focused on industrial development during this period. And after 1950s, public furniture such as benches and street slides were added around Cooks River area. And currently there are a lot of modern infrastructure and eco-friendly furniture around Cooks River area. And the views and landmarks change a lot around Cooks River because of the urbanization. It used to be a lot of natural roads and destroyed by the industrial development and after restoration, more green space and passes offer scenic water views. And currently, there are a lot of local points and benches enhance public engagement. If we look back to the development of the Cooks River, we will find that during the early colonization settlement, European farmers adapted the river for agriculture. They set a stage for human intervention, impacting the ecosystem. With industrialization, Factories along the river cause a severe pollution and destroy the wetlands, transforming the river into an industrial waterway. And after World War II, the urbanization leads to the canalization and concreting of the river to meet the needs of the growing population. Lastly, the environmental planning now focus on the restoring of the river health through green corridors and the conservation projects, 
aiming to balance the urbanization with nature. This shows a long journey of the human activity shaping the river and the need for thoughtful planning moving forward. We shall always learn from the history and show our respect to the natural environments. And finally, the mother nature will treat us well.